Well, two decades after the Lord's Resistance Army began terrorizing northern Uganda, the LRA is just a fraction of its former size, about 100 fighters. But the communities most at risk of the attacks uh, by this, little, uh, this group have little protection in remote lawless regions of the CLR and the Congo. Zach Badoff has more. In the village of Fenzon, there are no police, no army, no UN troops. This despite regular attacks in the area by bandits and armed groups such as the Lord's Resistance Army. We feel abandoned by the government. Even though we are just 10 kilometers from the town center, the government does not think of us. There is no cell phone network here either. But a project funded by USAID has found another way for communities to communicate and prepare for attacks. Catholic Relief Services brought VOA out to see how it works. Residents keep an eye on the movements of armed groups. They bring the information to the village chief, who then passes it on to the radio operator, Judiko Mbutusonge. He sends and receives security information on a solar-powered high-frequency radio connecting with radio operators in surrounding communities. Before the project, the communities were very isolated. In the past, the enemy came and we were surprised by that. Now it is more difficult for them. We can prepare ourselves and be ready. The early warning network connects 32 communities in the CAR and another 62 across the border in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. When the information arrives in the village, the community has already identified the spots in the village where the women and children go to hide. The men go and survey the village to make sure everything is okay. After the verification, they return. Residents also store their belongings and food around town so they would not lose everything during a raid. Jean-Paul Kiboborano helps broadcast the security information out more broadly over FM radio airwaves after it's been verified by multiple sources. It is not just the Lord Residence Army who create the insecurity. There are many groups of bandits in the bush. Even if the LRA is defeated, this community protection plan designed by the project will survive forever. So far, this early warning network has reached nearly 300,000 people. Zach Badour for VOA News in Fenzan, Central African Republic. The Homegrown School Feeding Program is a national initiative for needy citizens. Many states are already launching the program, such as Ogun State in southwest Nigeria, where children from various schools are now getting free meals at school. Let's take a look. The homegrown food program introduced by the federal government of Nigeria, designed to feed millions of children in primary schools across the country, launches in Ogun State, southwest Nigeria. In the first phase of the program, pupils of 874 public schools will enjoy healthy meals in school at a time when many households are feeling the impacts of economic challenges. The school feeding program will provide a hot, nutritional, balanced meal to every child in primary one to three in our public schools, every school day. We also expect that there will be improved school performance and improved health status of these pupils benefiting from the program. Apart from the joy of a free meal for every child, there's also the benefit of job creation and income generation in a value chain involving about 1,381 food vendors and many local farmers in Ogun State alone. We have 1,554 schools. In the first batch that we're kicking off with right now, 874 schools will start with the number of children there. But others will add on as soon as we finish the documentation of the vendors in the next two weeks. Everybody will be fed from primary one to three. 
Parents and students are thankful for the gesture, commending the state and federal government's effort to encourage education. This is one of the things that make edu education a success. Without food in the belly of the child, every effort to impart knowledge is a mirage. It can't stay because in a sound body, it's a sound mind, in a sound mind, sound brain. The government's free national homegrown school feeding program is one of the five social safety nets aimed at achieving socio-economic development at the grassroots. It was formally inaugurated on June 9, 2016, with a provision of 500 billion naira in the national budget. Hopefully, the impact of good nutrition will reflect on the health and development of Nigerian children. You're watching Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCorry in Washington. Now, four British citizens who caught malaria while traveling in Africa have shown resistance to the main drug used to treat the disease, as according to researchers at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Scientists say the revelation should be a warning for Africa. Henry Ridgewell reports. The four travelers were treated with a drug called Artemetha lumefantrine after returning to Britain from different parts of Africa within a five-month period, showing symptoms of malaria. The cases alerted scientists at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. This uh, drug is normally expected to uh, cure someone after a three-day course and they're, they're sent home once their, their blood films show that there's virtually no parasites left. And in each case, these, para these, these patients seem to have a clear blood film or, or very close to a clear blood film and were sent home with, with an apparent uh, clean bill of health only to return three to seven weeks later. The drug is part of a treatment known as artemisinin combination therapy or ACT widely used across Africa where most malaria cases and deaths occur. These are among the first cases of apparent reduced susceptibility to the treatment and doctors are urging vigilance. If it's under threat from resistance and we haven't absolutely ascertained that's the case but we suspect it's certainly time now to look very carefully at that. Um, if it is under threat, that, that is uh, a serious issue and we need to take steps. Such steps might involve using other drugs alongside ACT, but such a change of strategy takes time. But of course, a lot of malaria is in the countryside, it's in district hospitals and bush clinics. Um, you can't just say, oh, let's try a different drug if it's not available at the time. So that requires planning and forethought. Resistance to ACT drugs is an ongoing problem in parts of Southeast Asia, but the resistance shown by the malaria parasites in these four cases is unrelated. Whatever it is that is happening in Africa, uh, these uh, four patients don't represent the kind of resistance that, that has become a, really a quite serious problem uh, in Southeast Asia. Chinese scientist Professor Yu Yu Tu won the 2015 Nobel Prize in Medicine for her discovery of artemisinin as a treatment for malaria. Its widespread use has contributed to a 30% fall in malaria deaths worldwide between 2010 and 2015. Scientists say the latest cases of apparent resistance are a warning and should be investigated further. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. It's now time for a short break, but before we go, a reminder to visit our website, channelstv.com, for all the latest information around the clock. You can also find us at youtube.com forward slash channels web.